Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here, and welcome back, guys, for what is going to be nothing short of another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. And if you guys are new around here and finding yourself on my channel for the first time today, don't forget to check out that subscribe button because we drop an update just like this one every single day around 1 p.m. UK time to keep you guys up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space, but also the broader markets. And that is exactly what we intend to do in this video. We are going to be starting things off with the broader markets as we had USD. GDP for quarter on quarter come out yesterday and it came out better than expected. Again, this is very much confirming the narrative that we've been pushing in regards to no recession or kind of doomsday in sight. We think there is a very fruitful period ahead for the markets. Uh, crypto is going to be, in my opinion, the fastest horse in what is going to be a, uh, a, a race that is going to see risk markets do very well. And that's all going to center around central banks, manipulations of or manipulating currencies, uh, taking the strength out of the Dixie, which aligns with global liquidity cycles, election cycles, Bitcoin for cycles, business cycles, um, that ultimately sees this really good time ahead for the markets. My best guess in regards to crypto based on cycles and certainly previous cycles is that you know we've got a good uh, year or so ahead of us and we're going to be discussing that in this video so we'll be starting things off by looking at gdp we're also going to be talking about rate cuts now we've said it's an idiosyncrasy that many people out there believe that when the fed cut rates when they pivot this is very bearish for the markets in 2000 it was certainly with the uh, dot-com crash and in 2007, 2008, it was also because you had the uh, implosion of the mortgage-backed securities market, the housing crash of 2008. However, if we look at the past 12 times, the Fed have gone and lowered their first interest rate. We'll show you data on this from Schwab. There's only been two out of 12 times where actually the S&P 12 months later has been down. Typically, it's offered very good returns. And that's essentially very much confirming the narrative that we had. We'll be looking at this in regards to the S&P chart. We'll be talking about how this aligns also with global liquidity because the Fed is the driver of liquidity. We saw a great example of that with the Bank of Japan strengthening the yen through an interest rate hike and, of course, the uh, readjustment in regards to the carry trade, people borrowing yen at zero, carrying it over to other markets, other uh, FX pairs, and ultimately... Um, it was a great example of how central banks ultimately manipulate markets. There's this amazing time ahead. We'll be looking at business cycles uh, in the form of PMIs. I think we've got PMIs today. Then talking about Bitcoin, a little bit of crypto news. We see uh, basically uh, Bitcoin on exchange continues to get withdrawn. And this is happening throughout this, what we believe is a pullback in a broader uptrend for Bitcoin in a very broadening fashion. And then, of course, we've got news yesterday from Trump's twist, official Twitter account that he wants to make crypto the home for um, or America, the home for crypto. So you've got two sides of things. Um, we want to try and stay as apolitical as possible on this channel and we'll continue to try and do so. Uh, although we do have values and views that we uh, very much stand upon um, and base many things off of. And of course, this is extremely relevant for the markets in regards to who's going to win and what the ramifications are going to be. Crazy. I covered it yesterday. We didn't get, you know, the, the, the interest in crypto is very low at the moment, but it was crazy to me that the SEC actually charged... OpenSea, which is an NFT marketplace for the sales of unregistered securities, kind of claiming that OpenSea is selling NFTs that constitute securities. Where does that line stop and where does it start? You're now saying digital art and things like this could potentially be deemed as securities. There's broad, broad ramifications for that. And it's a real power grab that the SEC is undergoing. But as promised, guys, let's start things off with a macro. Yesterday, you had preliminary GDPs quarter on quarter for the US. Now, the US is the biggest driver, obviously, with a dollar reserve currency of macroeconomics. Um, and it's very important that we get the macro picture right, because our small but very significant and to come infinitely more significant space um, is going to fall in line with that. Basically, you can say you get the direction of the dollar right, which we've been pretty right on, uh, and you'll get the direction of everything else um, right generally. But we had... Preliminary GDP has come out at three. The expectations were 2.8. This is better than expected. Again, we've been really pushing the narrative that we don't think a recession is in sight. We do consistently get comments saying we're already in a recession. I don't see any data to support that personally. We're bullish on pretty much most things right now. Bonds, housing, equities, across the board. FTSE in the UK broke out to a new all-time high for the first time in, I think, eight years. Broke out, retested, 
it's ready to see further continuation. Isn't it interesting how certainly the UK and the US, they're now, uh, depending on obviously who wins, whether it's Harris or we know Starmer's already in charge, they're planning on and likely going to be taxing people on capital gains and things like this significantly more. Uh, it's, you know, maybe a, a silver lining here is that they know what's probably to come for the markets because they're going to continue to uh, devalue the currency systems um, and tax us all um, in regards to the fact that most people have a fixed wage. Um, so we don't think a recession is in sight. We're getting consistent news on this. We also had unemployment, uh, or certainly unemployment claims. This stayed very neutral. Uh, it was slightly up by about 2K. The big one for me is going to be non-farm payroll next week. We'll be reporting on that. Um, we may even do a live video around it. We're going to start doing lives in the evenings, guys. Um, I'm traveling away next week on a business venture, but we'll be reporting daily and really upgrading things, the studio, the cameras, everything, guys. Um, we want to become your number one or one-stop shop for crypto. Um, but we're getting consistently good data, um, certainly from where I'm sitting. Uh, also, you had um, Bostic speaking yesterday, kind of confirmed what we have already know. Today, obviously, we've got, for me, importantly, is um, core PCEs expected to remain the same. Um, and we also have Chicago PMIs. Now, PMI cycles are kind of like a business cycle, if you will. Um, and you can see we're expecting this to uptick along with global liquidity, which we're going to talk about in just a second and everything else. And the driver of that is ultimately going to be the uh, Fed. So what I want to do is many people out there believe that we know the Fed is about to pivot and it's kind of caused a little bit of angst because people believe that whenever the Fed pivot, it, 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 it's basically the beginning of the end. Now, it really depends on what context the Fed are pivoting as a result of are they pivoting because the mortgage markets just exploded imploded are they pivoting because we're already markets are plummeting and they, they, they want to kind of adjust to that or are they pivoting because in this case inflation is where they want it to be they're seeing slight upticks in regards to unemployment and um, the main beast that they've looked to slain in my opinion largely is slain we've been very much against this camp of a 1970s style resurgence in regards to inflation we haven't seen the data to, su to suspect it until we do we we, we continue to expect further uh, deflation we're seeing that and this is from schwab this is the past 12 times going all the way back to 1929 that the fed have lowered interest rates for the first time. Um, and this is looking at the S&P's returns 12 months after. And you can see that there was only two times in 2007 and 2001 that the S&P gave negative returns. And that is, I would argue, because of the specific events that were taking place then, okay? So for example, with the S&P in 2008, we had the mortgage crisis. And the Fed actually uh, started to cut as the markets were going down. If we look at um, the dot-com crash, which is here, again, the Fed actually started to cut as the markets were falling. And there was a very specific reason to why these markets crashed. But if you look at the historic correlation between lowering interest rates, for example, March 2020, the market then went on significantly higher for a period of uh, something like 200, 300 days, something like that. So we do not believe that there's going to be negative repercussions because we're not seeing any data to support it and we don't think there's that landmine like we saw in 2008 or, or, or the 2000s to suggest that, you know, we're looking at a big crash. I think we are going to get a crash, by the way, guys. I just think we have this bull market before it happens. Um, and it's likely all going to coincide with the Dixie global liquidity cycles. We're likely going to see the cycles that we continue to see repeat, repeat, uh, like the Bitcoin four-year cycle, for example, which is being followed pretty much perfectly. The only anomaly here is is that Bitcoin's gone on and put in a, a high pre-halving, and this is obviously due to institutional involvement. But generally, if you look at the altcoin market, it's right around where it should be in regards to Bitcoin cyclical cycles, basing and sort of waking up, stretching, yawning, um, ready for what is a good time that's going to be largely supported by the macro environment, which we're showing you here. So just to kind of squash that, this very much aligns with global liquidity cycles because ultimately everything is going to center around the Dixie. Uh, let's pull up the Dixie, which is at current support. The dollar is going to come down fundamentally because they're going to lower interest rates on it, which means it's going to lose further ground, just like it gained further ground against other currencies when, you know, because they have larger repercussions. They're a little bit of a strength area, certainly a support area. 
We still expect it to come down to the lower band of our channel that we've had and we've been continuing to highlight. That's going to be fundamentally led by we've got Fed funds here. You can see the correlation. This ultimately has huge ramifications for risk markets generally, but certainly Bitcoin. Every bull market Bitcoin's had, there has been a, an element of dollar weakness on the back end of it, whether it was this one, whether it was this one in 2017, or whether it was even uh, going back into 2000 sort of 13. Dollar down, but Dixie up. Um, sorry, Dixie down, uh, Bitcoin up. Dollar strong, Bitcoin down. And we expect further continuation to the downside for the dollar which is fundamentally coming on the back end of interest rates, which generally is going to be bullish for the markets we've just looked at. Uh, and ultimately, when you technically look at the markets, they're very much positioned in this manner. So it aligns with global liquidity, it aligns with PMI business cycles, which I think is going to start to uptrend, um, which aligns with the Bitcoin four-year cycle theory. I want to address this, actually, because people are kind of peeved off in regards to Bitcoin right now and crypto generally. But if you look at the halvings, the anomaly here is that Bitcoin's well and truly elevated from where it typically should be in regards to a halving. And if you look at where altcoins typically are, um, let's use ETH, they're where they should be. Okay, so this is typically where these coins are around their halvings. They are, the majority of them are here, ready for this upside, ready for that continuation with the Dixie coming down, ready for the Fed to lower interest rates and thus bolster markets, global liquidity to increase, etc., etc., etc. On to a little bit of crypto specific news. I thought this was very interesting. This is a, a report from Cointelegraph. It looks at exchange reserves and the Bitcoin price. So during this pullback that we've seen, which we think is just a pullback in a broader uptrend, again, we've got technical targets that align with what we're talking about on the macro. Um, reserves have continued to be drained. I honestly believe this is going to result in broad upside continuation in a flag-esque manner. I mean, the flag could take you to 130k. We've got uh, 151k coming. You know, we've got positions, or we've, I've certainly got positions in the altcoin market, but we've got targets for like the total two, for example, um, that we think is ultimately going to see 3.8 trillion dollars. We think there's going to be a large unlock in regards to uh, a regulatory victory. And we've seen many of them. The open sea thing really annoys me, actually, guys, because I, I, I think like the, the SEC is actually calling NFT securities inherently by going after open sea. Ah, where, where do you stop? Where do you start with this? You know, and then like if somebody sells like like a really sort of like far out thing here is like something perhaps like OnlyFans. Surely the SEC can have the same. Um, concepts there in regards to something like that where people are selling something you know or, or, or anything largely um it's a very gray area i'm not sure why they've made that move again i think they're just trying to grab as much power as possible and, and, and let the courts decide whether they actually have jurisdiction or not but we've seen them get their hat their behinds handed to them uh, significantly also others the stage is set guys it's just a case of hanging in there you're Retail interest. Retail typically doesn't come in at the bottom of the market. Certainly, that's where altcoins are. It comes in during the uptrend. You know, if you look at your um, crypto derivative equities, this is Grayscale Digital Large Cap. You know, this is all still to play out. Miners look spectacular, by the way. 21 shares, Crypto Basket Index, something like Mara. You know, we can go on and on and on and on and on. Uh, and to finish things off, not really political, but more crypto specific. Obviously, Donald Trump tweeted yesterday talking about how he wants to make America the home of crypto. And he spoke about, I'm assuming he's referring to uh, choke points, whatever it, whatever it is, whatever the choke point something in regards to crypto. And he spoke about how, you know, you're being choked right now and he's going to prevent that. We'll see. Um, I think there's definitely lines being drawn in regards to a more pro crypto candidate. And, and, and a less crypto sort of a less pro crypto candidate but we shall see so to wrap things up guys the stage is very much yet gdp's looking good you know just when it walks talks and quacks like a duck accept it um you're very much looking at global liquidity cycles all these cycles playing out again on the back end of central bank manipulation of currencies um through now lowering interest rates it's ultimately going to drive all these cycles drive the risk markets and i think crypto is going to be the best reforming and we can derive that from dividing crypto and buy other markets to see if it's in an uptrend against them. And, and if we're bullish on those and we think crypto is going to go even higher, so much, um, so many pieces of the puzzles put together. You've just got to be in it to win it, I'm afraid, guys. That is it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Have a fabulous Friday and I'll see you all in the next Daily Market Update. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.